course, you come from Goldman Sachs, but it don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you mean by interlocking. <laughs> okay? In other words, um, nepotism at its best. Keeping yeah. the money in the family. Then you know, remember, it's a privately yeah. owned corporation yeah. that just started 100 years ago. So it's still, it's still a business? Yeah, it's, that's it. But, but they to show you the law that you can beat them. Yeah. And which but they use the terminology of G person, so they can kind of like substitute themselves in into each seat or something like that? Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's exactly. That's, that's, what we, that's, what, that's what it means by interlocking. 470 interlocking. So they got 470 people who sits on the various boards of each of these, <laughs> and they're all part of their fucking reserve system. Don't they break that down into houses? Basically, because these are certain houses, mm -hmm. like um, like the Bank of um, Hamburg and um, Amsterdam, the Warburg, you know what I'm saying, is the major house in that, you know, in those territories in Europe. Um, Israel Moses Seth Bank of Italy, but you know that's that's the Jewish joint. That's down there actually in Israel. <clears throat> All right. And so he actually controls the banking system not just from Italy, which is Rome, you know what I'm saying, which is part of the Vatican Bank. Mm -hmm. And the Jews is the ones who actually are the ones with the Rothschilds are the ones who actually were the bankers for the Vatican. That's how they got so rich. And then they funded a family here called the Rockefellers to continue their thing from in the East, the Rockefellers in the West. So really, when they talk about the Wicked Witch of the West, they really talk about the family of the Rockefellers. When they talk about the Wicked Witch of the East, was how the Rockefeller was trying to crush the Rothschilds and take. <laughs> but see, they all sat on the same damn board, so what's the difference? That's right. Because then, Chase Man and Bank is owned by the Rockefellers. Then how did Hanson step into that? The one that uh, Queen of England that was. Yeah. She stepped in and broke it up because I know that when I was looking up information about Bank of America, right. Bank of America is under black nobility right. in Italy. In Italy, that's right. And who is that? <laughs> Israel Moses Seth, yeah. Bank of Italy. Mm. Remember, the 470 you, interlocking players. <laughs> Continue on. All right, if you want to know, get the book, Secrets of the Temple, How the Federal Reserve Bank Runs the Country. William, um, what's that, Greer. All right, get that book. All right, according to um, Eunice Mullen, these banks are major stockholders in the feds, and in his book, World Order, he says that the five banks are controlled from London. All right? Mullen states, um, says that besides its controlling interest in the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, the Rockefellers have developed important financial interests in other parts of the United States. The entire Rockefeller empire was financially um, fi um, um, financed by who? The Rothschilds. The Rothschilds. Permit me to issue and control the money of a nation, and I care not who makes this law. This is Maya M. Sher Rothschild, who had over 600 billion, no, excuse me, 600 trillion dollars in gold in his basement. Yeah, 600 trillion. Now, basic. guess who ends up going with the daughter? Or better yet, the great, 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 great granddaughter of M. Sher Rothschild. Uh, J. Electronic. J. Electronic. Uh-oh. They just woke up last year. Hey, I don't, you have to explain it. Oh, my God. He's, he's, he's a hip-hop uh, rapper. He's a rapper. J. Electronica. Who is J. Electronic? He is a rapper with Jay-Z. But he used to date Erykah Badu. But he used to date Erykah Badu, but after he worked with Erykah Badu, somehow he ends up with the Rothschild's daughter, who is the pin, well, I guess you can say the, the Pindera, which is uh, the, the head dragon, which is the head of her family mm -hmm. money. Mm -hmm. She's like worth over like $350 billion. Mm -hmm. And he just ends up being with her. Mm -hmm. And she has a record studio. Mm -hmm. And she, he becomes one of the artists, and then all of a sudden he falls in love. <laughs> Let me just wait that. Next thing you know, they walking around town with each other. London um, tabloids and New York tabloids, everybody is looking at J Electronica and they wondering, what the hell is going 
<laughs> What's going on? He got body. Well, he is got body. He know this information that brother Hello, he I dropped in. You know what I'm saying? So he know this information. But the thing is, is that I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall to see, mm -hmm. to see and hear the conversations that these two have. <laughs> he come from Louisiana. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she come from the richest damn family in the world. Next to the Vatican. Man, he rode the bus. I you? would have loved to be the fly. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I would have been the fly. Like, this is a white thing. What are y'all talking about? Yeah. 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 Really? I would just love to have known. Right, where is that? Exactly. And then what, what happened that she was married and she did her husband and said, Yo, dude, come on, Jack. <laughs> 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 We're trying to find who Jack is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't know. Well, we don't find who, who, um, um, who, who, What's the man's music? Who got the joint? Jay, look, I'm sorry, but Jay ain't put out an album yet. He ain't need to. He, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, dude's been out for, this dude's been out for like seven years. He ain't put out an album yet, just single. I hope he was doing a stick-up kid. Exactly. He could have been doing a stick-up kid. Exactly. Who sings stick-up kid? Oh, what's he looking at? Look, look, look. Y'all got him. Look now. Y'all got him. Okay. Oh, it's all right, but y'all got to follow me here. <laughs> Go right. and get the movie Stick Up Kid. Get the movie Stick Up Kid. Man, you uh -huh. got to see this. In the movie, they talk about the morals. Uh-huh. Stick Up Kid. All right? They're going around getting property in New York. Uh-huh. And there's a way that they're going about getting this property and this real estate. Uh -huh. It ain't like they sticking cats up, like for real, with guns. They damn sticking them up with the brain. Really? They daggone going in and That's just nice. cutting cats out. Look, no, y'all got to go see this. Can we get it on the um, red box? Yeah, you can get on red box. What year is it on? Huh? What year? Oh, that came about five, six years ago, bro. Okay. About five, six years ago. Yeah, but it's called Stick Up Kid. You got to, you have to see this. All right, so here, this is M. Show Rothschild who made that statement. I care not who makes the laws, I control the money. So, ha ha! I know. I know. This is J.D. Rockefeller. Y'all know who that is. His son, David Rockefeller, done had damn four, I think he's, I think he's going his third or he's a fourth heart replacement. Dude just won't die. <laughs> David Rockefeller, his son. Dude is still alive, like damn near 90 years old, done had like four heart transplants. Wow. Six. 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 Nine. Look, <laughs> I haven't read it. It say six hundred. Right. Yes. Successful. Right. Successful. They the making sure they keep the guy around. Who is this? Look, look, they waiting around for they can clone somebody for this dude. Yeah. There's, okay. there's no way possible. This dude, six heart transplant. Successful. Successful. All right. Uh, that's all I'm saying. All right, you'll be seeing it. Look, I'm going to tell you, me and my wife went to a Illuminati meeting. Soon they seen us come up here. Within three minutes, they said, um, little dude came across the stage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, we're going to go into questions now. We were like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Mm. So they shut it down as soon as they seen us come in the door. Mm. Oh, because, yeah, yeah, it was, a, it was, it was an Illuminati meeting. All the black hair, blue eyes. For real. Oh, they were all old. They were 60, 70, 80, 90 years old up in there. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about they had crane, canes and crutches and. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And the dude's main topic was cryogenics. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Thank you. Okay. There you go. So the whole thing was about cryogenics. And they made a joke like, ha, 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 ha. see y'all next year. See y'all a hundred right. years. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See, see y'all a hundred years from now. So did. Because they were talking about freezing the bodies and finding the cure and bringing them finding back. Finding the cure for the disease oh, yeah. that they died from and bringing them back. That's what Walt Disney was trying to do. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, he probably started it. <laughs> <laughs> Right. So, and then, not only did they talk about that, they also talked about killing the prime minister um, and presidents in Africa. Mm. Next thing we know, 
a couple days later, one of the presidents got killed. I can't remember Joe his name right now, Joe but I'm just like, hold up, we were just sitting in the meeting when they were talking about They said he would be killed that weekend and then we won't. Hey. For real? Yeah, yeah. Now, now, now understand yeah. that, once again, no. we, was the, we was the only people in there like us. Melanated. Melanated. <laughs> so it's about eight of us come walking up in there like, yeah, you up in this joint, yo. Say in the back. Y'all having a meet. Y'all having a meet, but we up there. We up there. We up in here too. We, right, right, right. We up in here too. All right, so all my eight of us sat down right next to each other in the back. Thought, you know, we thought we'd be an incognito, right? <laughs> and, so, and so, and so, the dude still talking about cryogenics, talking about assassination of the presidents in Africa and all types of stuff. Because he was a former Ronald Reagan advisor. Like He's a former Reagan advisor. So you know whatever he says is going to be... Going That's what's going dead. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They love their, they love race. You know, it, 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 anything Reagan did, right? right is that, <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 so he talking once again cryogenics, top, top joint they talking about. Then they got into the assassination of Africans. Soon they, soon they seen us back there. They was like, uh oh, dude, how did dude come walking across the stage and told him? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then, oh, right, that's yeah. what happened. Oh, because because, because when he started talking about the assassination of the African president, he seen us sitting back there. Okay. The election was over. Okay. <laughs> the election was over. And of course, we was the only ones there. All right? So um, a white guy stands up. Now, this was hilarious. He was like, he said, he was like one of the um, people from the '60s, you know, um, the flower people, the um, you know, the, uh, the hippies. Yeah, so he, yeah. this is him. So he's up there with little, you know, like little bees on, and you know, mm -hmm. little, I'm like, oh, but they didn't crucify this dude, yo. Check this out. <laughs> <laughs> so he stands up. He's like, yes, I have a question. <laughs> Why do we always have to resort to killing and violence? <laughs> and I was like, this dude is trying to activate pioneer glands up in here. <laughs> is he crazy? This is, this is a little bit like me. He's going to get that up in here. He was like, that is not what we're going to do. Look, look, look. You should have seen the way everybody turned and looked at him. They was booming him. They were saying, sit your behind down. Don't you say another word. I mean, this is how they was talking to this dude. He's like, I just don't understand. You know why? Why everything had to be so violent? Why we got all we got to go around killing and taking people's stuff and you know? And he just going like that. And I was just like, but mm. he, he was by himself. Yeah. Even we wasn't stupid enough. It's all eight of us yeah. stupid enough to stand up and, and talk about y'all. You ain't gonna be going around killing no niggas now. <laughs> we, we didn't. We didn't even stand up and say all of that. All right? But this dude right here by himself said, up. We should be doing this. This is the reason why we have such a bad name on the planet Earth. We should, you know, why can't we just love? And everybody was like, they was like, oh, we sit down. And I mean, they was like, I'm like, damn, they getting ready to attack this dude. But, they, but he got the speech, though. Yeah, yeah. He, he ended up giving us the speech. Oh, oh, now that's the thing. Mm. Um, yeah. He gave us the speech. Oh, God. <laughs> so, guess what? After it was over, <laughs> what you got? Because <laughs> I got the whole speech. So you do it. We need copies. <laughs> Next thing you know, he mailed them the copies. Mailed us the copies. Wow. Of everything they talked about in here. Because he was writing it all down. <laughs> <laughs> so he was he was our infiltrator. Well, we infiltrated it too, but yeah. <laughs> it didn't go too well because like I said, so they sent us up in it, time for the speech to be over. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, so th these are the players in quote unquote um, the, um, the Federal Reserve Bank. We can go on and close this one out and okay. go to the last one. All right, so we got about 15 more minutes. What's up, what's up? It's, uh, it's about that time. 849. Yeah, okay. Um, no, oh, 849. There you go. 10 minutes. There we go. Right. Um, let me see. Uh, there should be one more up here. Is there another way? No, no, no. Yeah, go up. Okay. Um, yeah, go to the prison system. That's the one. Because no, no. that's one of the big things that's going on right now. All right, so this is what's going on. Article 1, Section 2. 
specifically states like that we excluded Indians not taxed and three fifth persons. All right. Um, allegedly, they you know, took this part out about the three fifth persons because the 14th Amendment um, was added in, which we find out that the 14th Amendment was never fully ratified. All right. So that means that the Dred Scott case still stands to this day. Meaning, in Dred Scott case, Judge Taney stated that you're not U.S. citizens, nor will you ever be. He said, Negroes and those of African descent are not included in the definition of citizenship. They're not citizens, nor will they ever be citizens. Now, for us, that's a good thing. But however, if you're a Boulay member, <laughs> you don't like that. So what you would do, like Martin Luther King did, was try to get civil rights when Malcolm already told him that he can't have civil rights without first being recognized as a human being. Mm -hmm. That's backwards. Mm -hmm. Because once you recognize as a, as a human being, then your civil rights are automatic. Mm -hmm. Okay? okay? So, continue on. So according to Article 1, Section 2, it says, it states that we Indians, those of African descent, Negroes, or classified as three-fifth persons, are three-fifths of a human being, thus subhuman. This is Masonic code, which means one sight in hearing, which is listening, which makes you deaf, dumb, and blind, mm -hmm. must be returned to being a five-fifth or one whole person again. So that means just two things that was taken from our sight and our hearing. So that means if I come to you and show you the information, you won't believe it. That means even if I if you hear the information by audio or by video and you hear it, you're still suspect. You still won't investigate. So those are the two things that was taken from us. All right? So that's why they called us brief person, because you have five senses. So how do you explain that, Messiah? Well, like I said, this is Europeans. The Europeans um, put that in there that we're three fifth person. We have what's called a three fifth clause. In which that, that's how um, Bush was able to steal the election from Al Gore. He used the three fifth clause. In other words, right, right, right. And what happened was is that if we were seeing this five fifth person or a whole person, then Al Gore would have won what? That election because he won the popular votes. But when the collegiate votes came tally up and Bush said, now nah, we're going to use the three fifth clause on this, he was talking about our votes. Remember, our votes have to be signed every 25 years. If we were citizens, then there would be no need to do what? To do that. So they had to reenact re it. They had to reenact it every 25 years. The first was done by Franklin Lee, um, um, by um, um, Lyndon Baines Johnson. He was the first in 1965. Then 1984, 83, 84, Ronald Reagan had to sign it. Then 2007, 2000, 2000 going to 2008, Bush had to sign it. George W. Bush had to sign it. So for every 25 years, they had to sign the voting right bill. And it's a bill. Now what happens when bills come to your house? It means there has to be some type of payment, right? Right. Okay. So you have to ask yourself, what is the payment for us having the ability to know to have that privilege, that voting privilege? Because it's a bill. What do we have to pay back? Taxes. Yeah. Taxes is what is also you being used as collateral. Right. So you have to pay back. Right. You pay back by energy. Right. Right. They use you as collateral mm. in exchange for your voting for your voting right privilege mm. or your voting privilege. It's not a right, but if it was a right, then you would have to have um, no one to sign it to begin with. All right, so here, three fifth clause of the United States uh, Constitution declares that the slave names, blacks, Negroes, and colleagues are identified and marked as United States property. The 13th Amendment abolished the slave laborers, allegedly, and their slave masters, thus making the 14th and 15th Amendment ecto facto um, laws to the 13th Amendment. All 14th Amendment citizens, including unproclaimed and unrecognized Moors of Mexico, all right, um, Moors America, American sovereigns, all property of the corporation called the United States, all right, in particular, or in caps, United States of America. 
Now, this Messiah goes back to the three monkeys. See no evil, speak no evil, hear no evil. And oftentimes a monkey is seen with a fez or a tall bush on his head, clapping symbols. Mm. This is all the form of the Shrine Masonic mockery. At the 32nd and 33rd degree in said Freemasonry, a person is able to join the Shrine. All right? Nowadays, it's the third degree. You can actually go in as a um, master mason. Where fed, say, assalamu alaikum, while alaikum assalam is to be applied. This is actually only two senses often times if a person is deaf, um, they're also mute, meaning that they cannot speak or speak well or have um, learned sign language to express oneself. All right? So their sight is taken. So these are the two things in which they'll be talking about that makes it three-fifths of a human being. All right? Because... Hence, making you an animal or a monster in their terminology. Go to the next slide, please. <clears throat> Malcolm X said on the civil rights versus the human rights. Human rights come before civil rights. You cannot have civil rights until you have human rights. Human right. rights represents the right to being a human being. Mm -hmm. Whenever you're respected and recognized as a human being, your civil rights are automatic. No. You have to get the recognition of human rights first. The Constitution classifies people the three fifths of a man, which makes subhuman, not a complete human being. And once our human characteristic was completely destroyed, this gave no justification for treating us like we were animals. Then it was also justified them selling us. If the black man's human rights had been respected, he never would have been a slave in America. And if his human rights been restored by the Emancipation Proclamation, automatically we would have been citizens after the Civil War. So we must be regarded as human. Our human rights must be respected before we can ever be regarded as citizens and our civil rights be respected. So Malcolm knew that we were the citizens. Well, Martin Luther King began to start understanding that too. Here, where do we go from here? Chaos of community. Dr. Martin Luther King says we're approaching an area where the voice of the Constitution is not clear. We have left the realm of constitutional rights and we are entering the area of human rights. Mm. Why? Because he realized that you were still classified like a three fifth old person and that you can't get civil rights until you first is what? Recognized as a human being. Mm -hmm. So they both started moving to the same area. That's, right. That's why they had to kill him before they both reached the age of 40. Why? Because 40 symbolizes spiritual maturity. Mm -hmm. And they both, their theology, their philosophy was coming to each other. Mm -hmm. It was getting ready to merge. And if both of them would have got together, you can see the force that would have probably wrecked mm -hmm. You would have seen this right here. Mm -hmm. right. They would think about these two coming together and coming up with a counter plan to what is taking place right now. Mm -hmm. This is what it went beyond Elijah Muhammad. This is what it went beyond. Um, Andrew Young and, and um, all these, you know, Jesse Jackass, I mean, um, yeah. Jesse, Messy Jesse, I mean, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, Jesse Jackson, all right, um, this one went beyond all of them, all right, so here, let's go to the Black Stone Dictionary, let's see what they was getting ready to discover, right here, chattel, look at the word chattel, the word chattel is a French word for what? Pride. Cattle, pride. pride. So here, the article of personal property, any species of property not amounting to freehold or fee and land, the term chattels is more comprehensive than goods, as it includes what? Animated as well as inanimated property. Mm. Animated. So you was chattel property, which was cattle. Okay? Continue on. So the birth certificate and social security card are forms of chattel paper. Before slavery, some of our ancestors was granted. Now we are traced and tagged. Both carrying these documents with us all the time with no superior claim or lean on them. The birth certificate and the social security card are probably the best gift in a sense that could have been given to us because it's a trust in which that's attached to them. That's only if you understand the signs of discharging process, the discharging process. If you don't, then it can be the worst thing that it ever given you. Alright? So here. What is a birth certificate? A birth certificate is a warehouse receipt. It's a, it is a receipt issued by a person of baby engaged in the business of storing goods for hire. Well, where do you store goods at? Remember, chattel property and goods are one and the same by definition. Because it's animated as well as what? Inanimated objects. So if you have a warehouse receipt, they have the ability in order to store you somewhere. That storage place is called escrow, which is jail or prison. <laughs> That's the storage facility for anyone who breaches the original contract or bond, which is the birth certificate. 
Well, that's all rolled up in here, too. <laughs> Continue on. So goods. Goods meaning that there's movable when security interest is attached. The term includes the unborn young of what? <laughs> what did Malcolm just finish saying? When they classify as three-fifth person, what did they make this? Animals. Animals. Continue on. Continue on. Yeah, right here. Go back, please. All right, so gohim. This is the Jewish terminology for us. Is gohim, a boy. All right, it says a foreign nation of Gentiles, a troop of what? Animals. There you go. And this is based on the new, strong, exhaustive concordance of the Bible. So gohim means literally nation. It's Jewish slang for what? Cattle, or as they say, cattle, or what? Animals. So this is the reason why the Jews refer to us as what? The Gohim. Saying that we Gentiles. In other words, we follow our genitalia, our genitals. This is what they say. In other words, you think with your lower self instead of your higher self. But we are the original who? The original Hebrew. It's the original Jew. It's the original Israelites. So what they're doing is making mockery of us for those who don't know who we are. So go to the word monster, because we talk about animals, then you have to also think about a monster. Well, right here, it says a human being by birth, but in some parts resembling a what? A lower animal. animal. Well, that's your lower self, your lower mind, your lower nature. From here, down to here, you think with less greed, jealousy, and envy. All right, these are the lower attributes of the lower self, which is all stem from the fear. So here, we are human by birth, but in some parts resembling a lower animal, a monster having no inheritable blood and cannot be an heir to any land. So being that we're classified as monsters per se, animals slash goheem slash three-fifth person, you can't own land. So what do they do? They lease you the land. And then they make you pay taxes on it. Because guess what? If you don't pay the taxes, what happens to the land and what happens to the house? The IRS and the mortgage company, banks, they come in and do what? Confiscate. So that means that you didn't really own it, right? It, you leased, you was leased it. Because you are a monster, three-fifth person. You have never done anything to state otherwise. You have never put in an affidavit, which is affidavit of truth, or affidavit of facts to state otherwise. So therefore, they have no choice but to uh, presume that you are a monster. That's what racial profiling is about. Mm. You look like a nigga to me. <laughs> mm. Until they come to the car and you start spitting the shit on them, the science, you be like, um, yeah, well, based on a dress guy case, yeah, I'm not, I'm not even in your jurisdiction based on the fact. And they start hearing this stuff, and you be like, oh, so okay, this ain't that nigga. Well, go ahead, sir. Because <laughs> <laughs> I got more niggas over here, I can go ahead. <laughs> and that's what happened to us all the time. You know, my wife, we was riding on our place for over six years. All right? Our own place that we made. <laughs> so we right. had an Argon energy pyramid in the window, then we didn't get full as much. Right. So, so then, the officer would come. Um, uh, I remember one time I was in my house. I was like, um, they, they was asking, um, well, license or registration? Well, so I don't have license nor registration. And he said, well, what do you have? I said, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> my right to travel um, affidavit and my right to travel car. And I gave it to him. He took it. He looked at it. went to the car. He typed in the name and seen that there was no um, warrant. He brought my stuff back and said, continue traveling safely, sir. <laughs> <laughs> All right? So, I mean, so it's up to you to redefine yourself. Because right now, just as they have you in definition. All right? Valentine Law Dictionary, 1930. It says a prestigious or um, prestigious. Uh, birth, a human birth or offspring not having shape of mankind which cannot be heir to any land, albeit be bought for in matter. Alright? So, if you will. Right? So, um, this is what I was saying. There's no, there's nothing worse than a slave with the ego. Alright? Um, slave, you get the word slave. It says, a person who is wholly subject to the will of another, one who has no freedom of action, or whose person is services are wholly under the will of another, 
one who is under the power of a master and who belongs to him, so the master may sell and dispose of his person, of his industry, of his labor. Hence the reason why Black Wall Street was these up or destroyed. But they still had masters. They never got themselves from out of the three-fifth as a property category, as chattel property. But yet they had, what, 36 blocks of movies, laundry mats, banks, barber shops, over 600, yeah, five to 600 businesses in 36 blocks, all destroyed because none of them got out of the status of being classified as Negro, Black, and Colored or three foot person. So since you still have, uh, still have a master, what did it say? Master may sell, dispose of his person. What you, what you think? What you think been happening here with the police brutality? The reason why the police has not gone to jail? Because they kill him. Because they kill him. They kill him. They dirty. But they can't just come out and tell you that. That's right. They can't just tell you that. They can do the investigation, like what you said. Right. Cattle led to the slaughter. Makes sense. Right. 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 So what happened? All right, we seen Mike Brown get shot in the street. All right, we seen the brother um, get shot down in um, South Carolina, shot in his back by the cop. All right, we see um, Sandy, who supposedly hung herself just a couple of days ago. All right, we see we see all this take place. Why? Dispose of his her person. The master can do that. Of his industry, Black Wall Street. Um, 1985, you had the destruction of MOVE in Philadelphia. They took a bomb and dropped on the whole damn block of MOVE, destroying it. All right? Because of his industry and of his labor, without his being able to do anything. Mm. Ain't that what's happening, y'all? Isn't that what happened? Right. You know, so, 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 so you can't do nothing. All this damn marching, get blisters on your damn feet. All this holding up signs, we it's shall overcome. Yeah. We gotta stop we supporting they mess. They yeah. they Jordans, they Robin. They don't want us to, in it anyway. We need to start manifesting and yeah. producing. Let the thrift store be okay. The thrift store is okay, and then our dog can go towards building community. We need to be coming together. The question that I have is why is it so hard for us to come together? Because we send our babies to them to educate them. Like I said, we put we, the women. That's why, because we steadily letting them inject our babies with vaccines like they animals. Well, that's what I'm dealing with right now. See, my kids not like, going to school and getting that vaccine. You can actually opt out. Like, oh, there's an exemption process. Right. You don't have to do that. Yeah, that's true. And they, they, they still have to allow your kid to come to school. But guess what? In California, it's mandatory. It now. is. So they're trying to get it mandatory throughout each of the states now. So that means that you have to go into laws even deeper because normally they would do it for cultural reasons, political reasons, or religious reasons. Mm -hmm. So now you have to go into the laws of each of the states once they attempt to make it mandatory, but they always have to give you a loophole. Mm -hmm. So now you have to find a loophole in order to be able to utilize that vaccination exemption form now. All right? Um, so they're now trying to make it mandatory. Why? Because without him being able to do anything, have anything, or acquire, or acquire anything, but what must belong to his master? Mm. That's why you got to pay taxes. Then um, you buy it, but you still got to pay for it or you lose it. Yeah. Question for you. Is PD 181 uh, that, uh, that document?